In this video, we're going to be talking about the types of circuits you might find in HVAC. In our previous video, we talked basically about the um, basics of the electricity and electrical flow and the components of the circuits. So now let's talk about the types of the circuits you'll come across. There's four types of circuits. Three of them are good. One of them is really bad. You have series circuits, you have parallel circuits, and you have series parallel circuits. And then our bad one is short circuits. Let's start off with the easiest good one first. In a series circuit, all of the components of the circuit are in a single path. If any component fails or opens, it stops the flow of current and nothing else in the circuit will operate. It's typically used in HVAC for controls and safety switches. It's not typical for loads. Loads in a series circuit share voltage. No load will get the full source voltage. So this is a problem. If your motor is expecting 240 volts and you have two motors in there and it's not getting full 240 volts, it's not going to work properly. That's why we don't see them used for loads very heavily. Amperages remain the same in all parts of the circuit. So again, our example, if source voltage, that's a voltage coming into the circuit, is 240 volts, and there's two motors in the series, each motor is only getting a portion of the source voltage. There's another major problem with series circuits as well. If any part of the series circuit opens, in other words, if a bulb burns out, if a motor fails, if a switch is open, the whole circuit fails. This is an example of a series circuit. Okay, so if we have switch one open and or switch two open, there's no longer a path. Now, if I come in here and if I close switch one, I still have switch two open. Again, I don't have a full path. Your voltage is going to stop at switch two. Now, if I close switch two, now my B1 and B2 could be a bulb motor or whatever is going to operate, but neither of them is going to get my full 240 volts. It's going to be split between the two. But again, you can see in a series circuit, there's only one path for the electricity to flow, or the current to flow is the better wording for it. Our next type of circuit is the parallel circuit. In a parallel circuit, the devices are next to each other. Think about rungs on a ladder. Each rung or branch will get full source voltage. Thus, each load will get full source voltage. The total amperage, that's the power being used, is the sum of the amperages on each branch. In other words, you add it up to get a total circuit amperage. And I'll show you some examples of this. If any individual branch opens or fails, the other branches will continue to operate. It's typically used in HVAC for loads, like motors, heat strips, or for different operations of the control systems. For example, heating, cooling, and fan might be all on the same system, but it's different branches of the system. Think about the lights in your house. If the living room light is on, turned off, the lights in your bedroom still operate. That's because they're all used in parallel. This is an example of a parallel circuit. Currently, switch one and switch two are open. There's a gap, so there's no current flow. If I close switch one, now bulb one will begin to operate and get my full source voltage, okay? Because it's connected here to L1 and to L2. That's my full source voltage. Bulb two is not running because switch two is open. But now if I close switch two, again, I have a path from source without going through another load. So both bulbs are now operating. If bulb one burns out, I still have bulb two running. Okay, this is a typical arrangement for loads and circuits in an HVAC system. We have a third type of circuit. It contains both a series component as well as a parallel component. You see this in most HVAC systems. Switching is done in series with loads in parallel. This is an example of a series parallel circuit. Okay, Switch 1 here controls my voltage or my current to both 
the top branch and the bottom branch. If I close switch one, I now have bulb one is operational because there's no switch. Switch two is still open, so bulb two is not operational. If I close switch two, now all of a sudden bulb one and bulb two are operational. Okay, so it's a series and a parallel. The switch one is in series with bulb one and switch two and B2. These two branches, B1 and B2, are in parallel with each other. They're going to get full source voltage. The amperage for, B, for the total circuit is whatever my amperage of B1 and B2 are. Now we have our third, we have our fourth type of circuit. It's called a short circuit. It's not going to work. A short circuit will trip a breaker, melt a fuse, and cause damage. Short circuits are short circuits without the load. Electricity will always take a path of least resistance. A load, which could be a bulb, motor, or any other component that does work, will always have more resistance than a plain wire or switch. So here we have an example of a parallel circuit and a series circuit. So it's a series parallel circuit. Now you'll notice the top branch just has a switch. So if I close switch one, okay, we're now allowing current to get into our parallel circuit component. If I close switch two, my bulb two is now getting 240 volts. Okay, so we have all our components of a circuit. I have my source, I have my path, I have my switch, and I have my load. Now, notice, switch three is still open. If I close switch three, I now have a path around the load. This is a short circuit. Because the current is going to come from L1 through switch 1, and it's going to take the path of least resistance back to the other side of my source. This is a short circuit, because it's going to bypass the load. So the current no longer has a load in its path. Bad things are going to happen. If the source is protected by a circuit breaker, the circuit breaker or fuse will pop. If the source is not protected by a circuit breaker, the source will continue to heat up and will eventually melt down and fail. Short circuits are bad things. Don't do this. Okay. And again, a plain wire or a switch in the wrong place will be the path of least resistance and will bypass the load. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at a couple different circuit examples. The simulations we're going to take a look at are part of the open source simulations from the interactive simulations from Colorado University. Um, I've put the website on this um, screen, but if you take a look at phet.colorado.edu en simulation, you'll find the simulations we're doing. The ACDC circuit construction kit is part of the legacy group of simulations. Okay, when you look at my screen right now, I have the AC simulator. I've built a basic one bulb circuit, has two switches in it. Um, I am using DC just because of the way the simulator operates. Um, AC looks too confusing on the screen. Same, base, same principles apply. Okay, I have the battery voltage set right now. If we take a look at the battery voltage by putting our voltmeter up here, I have it set for 100 volts. Okay, and again, it's just so we can ease of show. You'll see that this is a series circuit. We have one path for electricity to flow. I have a switch. I have a bulb. And I have a switch. I'm going to move the my leads over to the connectors. Again, same thing. And currently, because both switches are open, 
the bulb, if we come down here to my bulb connectors, okay, because both switches are open, we have zero volts. Okay, no voltage, both switches are open. Okay, if I come again here, no voltage. So, I'm going to close my left switch. Okay, you'll see now at the bulb, I still have zero volts. However, I now, from bulb across this open switch, have a potential of 100 volts. Let me close the switch. You'll see I now have 100 volts across the switch. Series circuit, single path for electricity to flow. Let's go ahead and we're going to shut this off. I'm now going to simulate the circuit that I did. I'm going to add that second bulb. That will do the same one we did with the um, that we had on the diagram. So I'm going to add this second bulb. Connect this up. Start it again. Now you see that my voltage has changed. From the 100 volts, we're now down to 49 volts on voltage. So things have changed a little bit. Okay, so again, a series circuit. Now, if I break the connection any place in this circuit, let's say I break a wire here, my circuit stops working. I reconnect the wire there, my circuit works. If I break a wire here, my circuit stops working. Okay, so we got to be very careful about series circuits. The other thing you'll notice is the bulbs are only getting, if I put my meter leads in the right place, they're only getting about 50 volts each. The sum of the voltage is 100 volts because that's what my supply is. But each individual load is not getting full voltage. Okay, amperage again. So let me change the type of meter we have. Okay. I'm going to throw an amp meter in here. Someplace. There we go. I throw an amp meter in here. Yeah, let's do that one. Move that. Okay, if I put my non-contact amp meter in here, you'll see I have 5 amps there. I have 5 amps there. I have 5 amps there. And if I shut a switch off, in other words, break the flow in this circuit, we go to 0 amps. So again, series circuit, voltage is shared. Okay, adds up to the total voltage being applied to the circuit. And... Any open in the circuit will shut off the loads. Very useful in switching applications and safety circuits. Not useful in circuits that do work. Okay, so my next circuit, I'm going to change this circuit up and we're going to talk about a parallel circuit. So now we have our parallel circuit. Okay, you'll see that it's the same as this, basically the same as the slide that I showed you earlier. It's 100 volts, okay, because I've had my meter leads here. It's 100 volts. I currently have two switches that are open. And if I take a voltage, we haven't talked much about this yet, but if I take a voltage on each side of the switch, you'll see I have the potential for 100 volts across these switches. Because again, an open switch will always read source on your meter. So now... If I go from here, if I go across this bulb, okay, I'm taking my voltages across the bulb right now, okay, because there and there are the same place electri electrically. If I take my meter reading across this bulb, I currently have zero volts. The same with down here, and again, because it's just a plain wire, it's the same place electrically. So I have zero volts here and here. Okay, ignore the positive and negative signs that show up on this meter. Because there's no voltage moving, there's no current moving, every place in this circuit I look with my amp meter, 
I have zero amps. It doesn't matter where I'm at. So now if I, let's move that off to the side. If I close switch, well, let's do switch two first. Close switch two, all of a sudden I now have as close to 100 volts as my meter is showing uh, being used or available by bulb one, 99.998. Okay, there's a little bit of line loss in these wires. If I go up to bulb two, I have zero volts because again, the switch is open. Now I close this switch, I have again very close to 100 volts. So you'll see that bulb one and bulb two are getting full voltage. This is because it's in a parallel circuit. Now, if I open switch one, okay, I'm gonna take my amp clamp and I now have 1.02 amps. No matter where I go in the circuit that's running, I have 1.2 amps, okay? If I go over here into the circuit that's not running because that switch one is open, I have zero amps. Now, I'm going to close switch one. We've already proven that this first circuit is getting, will get 100 volts. I now have 1.3 amps in that middle leg or the top leg. I have 1.02 amps in the bottom leg. Remember I said amperage adds in a parallel circuit which basically comes to a total of 2.35 amps. Okay, so again, once both sides of the circuit are together, I get the total amperage from each leg. Series circuit, amperage is the same all the way through the circuit. Parallel circuit, amperage adds. Now, Let's go ahead and readjust the simulator to show um, a series parallel circuit. That's the one piece of the circuit that we haven't, that's the one we haven't talked about of my good circuits. I still have to deal with a, a bad circuit, which is the short circuit, but let's talk about the series parallel next. Okay, I've reconfigured the simulator to be a series parallel circuit. Switch 1, which is over on the left-hand side, is in series with bulb 1 and bulb 2. Bulb 2 is controlled by switch 2. So let's go ahead and just check some voltages to start with. So at my main point of my circuit, which is my top left-hand corner and top corners, that directly in line with my voltage source, because again, we have to have a source, path, switches, and loads in our circuit. So I have 100 volts there. Again, any place on the right side of the circuit, okay, that's not controlled by a switch, I'll show 100 volts. But, okay, now, if I come across bulb one, zero volts. If I come across bulb two, zero volts. Now, I close switch one. Bulb one now comes on because there's no other switching device between the switch and bulb two. So right now, in reality, I have a series circuit. I have a single path for power to flow. Battery or supply, bulb one, and switch one. Okay, that's the series circuit component. Now, all of a sudden, I close switch two, I now have bulb two in the circuit. So I now have two loads in parallel, both getting full source voltage. They are also controlled by a single switch, which is in series. Okay, so this is a series parallel circuit. Switch in series or other device in series be controlled by controlling two bulbs in parallel. Let's make one more adjustment to this circuit. Okay, so I can come in here 
Yeah, let's split that junction. Make everything a little shorter here. And let's go ahead and throw in another bulb. And I'm going to show my connections differently. Let's grab a wire. Now, I have one load in series with two loads in parallel. However, nothing here is going to get full source voltage. You'll see that my load down there gets 80 volts. My load up here will get 80 volts because it's in parallel with two loads. But my load here okay, is getting 19 volts. And it's again, the voltage being used is different based on resistances. So again, we have a parallel part of the circuit and we have a series part of the circuit. Loads in parallel get full whatever voltage is available to them. Loads in series get split the voltage. Okay, so it's a series parallel circuit. My total circuit amperage is 1.9 amps. Throughout the series portion of the circuit, we're at 1.08. Okay, basically just one amp. Now, if I come down to the bottom portion here, it's 0.83. Okay, so again, we got to be careful because a series parallel circuit doesn't behave the same as a parallel. You treat it as two separate basic circuits. Okay, parallel circuit on this side, but with respect to bulb one, it's treated as a series circuit. We have one more circuit we have to talk about. I'm going to pause this. Actually, you know what? We can just open this and we can keep this easy. We need to talk about the short circuit. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the load. I'm going to go ahead and remove this last load, reconnect my wires, and I'm going to open that switch. So I close the switch here. My circuit amperage is 1.18. I have 11 volts in that first portion. Okay, and I'm showing, let's move my meter there, 100 volts across both bulbs, and 88 volts across the second. Again, series circuit splits it. Now, what's missing in this lower circuit? Okay, it's a load. So here, we're still going to have a load in the circuit. So if I close this switch... Okay, all of a sudden my current is bypassing bulb 2. So I now have 10 amps because I have less, but it's 10 amps wherever I go in the operational portion of the circuit. Okay. Because it's now a single bulb series circuit. Voltage is no longer going to be split. If I take, you see I have like almost, almost 0 volts there. But if I go here... I have almost 100 volts, okay, full source voltage. Now, what happens if I open this switch and I remove this load? Okay, let me remove some meters. Okay, I'm going to reconnect that there. I'm going to put a meter there. And I'm going to put a meter here. Close this switch. I have 100 volts on bulb 1. Only one bulb in the circuit. Switch 2 is open. There's no load in this path. Okay. If I put an amp clamp here right now, I have 1.33 amps. Okay. Now, this is what you never want to do. If I take a plain wire and I bypass the load. See the flames? All of a sudden, my amper shoots up. This is now an uncontrolled flow of current across the load, the switch, and everything else because the voltage is bypassing the load. 
I have a I basically have my full source voltage. There's a little bit of voltage going through the load just because of resistance, but I'm up at 31,000 31,000 amps. It's totally uncontrolled. You see the smoke, the fire and everything else. So my this is a short circuit. It's an uncontrolled flow of current because the our um, loads actually provide control for the flow of current. In an uncontrolled flow of current, everything heats up until it can't heat up anymore, and it will eventually cause smoke and fire. Okay, remove the bypass. And this could just be a plain wire out of place in a schematic. What would normally happen in this situation is a circuit breaker would blow, transformer would melt down, or something like that. Do not do short circuits. Troubleshoot your wiring so you don't have a short circuit.